Hello everyone and welcome to BLR Monaco Split 2 Grand Prix and alongside me is Artos. Hello everyone. So, here we go. We have the Season 7 podium. Hoff uh, took the win for Multi in second, Silver Arrow in third. Hoff also took the pole at 1 at 11, 4, 6, 8. And our previous race winner was DH. Um, so yeah, Monaco for one, they all want to win. So, yeah. Yep, indeed. Uh, we've got a, an intense battle for the championship going on right at the moment with uh, DH having a, an excellent run of results in the past few races and Chasma maybe dropping off the pace. I don't think he's finished outside the top five, but he uh, has been struggling the last few races, so he really needs to get back on it because I think there's not a very big gap in the championship. I think it was seven points going into this race, something like that. Um, but anyway, onto the track layout. We have 19 turns, 3.5. 3 4 kilometers and 39 laps a lot of laps today so it uh, could be going on for quite a while and uh, tire options today see so monaco's it's super soft soft enters and of course the wet tire yeah and also another interesting fact around monaco is it's the shortest track and race distance it's 130.3 kilometers so um, yeah it's also the shortest uh, by about a 20 kilometers, I think. Uh, it's normally 300. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, so it's a bit of an interesting fact there. Very interesting, thank you, Hamish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's time to go to Ryan LAC3 for qualifying comparison. Today's side by side comparison features Kazamar in the Williams and Hamish in the Sauber. It's raining in Monaco, so the intermediates are the tire of choice. You've got to be very careful under braking for the bumpy send to vault, and both drivers exit cleanly and using a bit of curves to power them up Beau Rivage and towards Massonet at the top of the hill for the blind apex left hander. You really want to hug that corner, keeping the car to the left to open up the line for Casino and get the best run down the hill towards Mirabeau. At the first split, we can see that the drivers are pretty much neck and neck as they head towards the tightest corner of the calendar at the Grand Hotel Hairpin. Have to be careful on the throttle for the short run down here to Portier, and then as early on the throttle as you dare for the longest straight on the track through the tunnel where again both drivers deploy curves to help them hit top speed on the only part of the track that's not wet. Breaking down now to second gear for the very tricky Nouvelle Chicane. And Chasm has a bit of contact with the barrier, but no damage done. Accelerating now towards the high speed section of the track with the left hander at Tabak. And then at the second split, we can see once again just how close it is between these two drivers. And now going through the swimming pool section, where Hamish has had some contact with the barrier, loses a bit of wing before the braking at Raskas. And in the final corners, we, we can really see the major difference between the two laps as Chasm nails the final sector and finishes with a 114.9. In the end, Chasm's time was only good enough for row two, uh, where he is followed directly by his teammate in the other Williams, uh, who was only uh, less than less than a tenth behind him. Uh, on pole position, we got Silver Arrow in the Ferrari and Zephyr in the Toro Rosso, filling up the rest of row one. And Kiku starting from fifth in the other Ferrari, while Desanya is in sixth position. And row four is DH1806, followed by Artos. And row five is Chicane and Hamish. It's the Monaco Grand Prix with your commentators, Hamish and Artis. We've got 0% chance of rain, and it's going to be a good race, I'm sure. Monaco, the one they all want to win. So... Yep, indeed. Oh, no, sorry. You were saying something? Yeah, yeah. I was, all, all I was going to say is we're on board with Chicane. Um, but anyway, I'm sure it's going to be a very close race. Yep, indeed. Uh, qualifying was in the wet. So, uh, the few maybe shuffled up a bit more than they would used to but we've got the lights on some people having custom huds they don't see it which was a, an interesting uh, thing Chaz yeah. was, was one of those and it looks like he's jumped Zephyr off at the start which is the and Hamish is getting squeezed off there and ooh, it's, not, it's not been a very good first corner for the but we see Artos now going around the outside of uh, Desania and actually getting the move done so uh, yeah. he jumped up one position 
So hopefully, fingers crossed, at least for Artos, this is going to be a good good result for him as he goes into six. Easy. But Artos is way yeah, past by down there. And wow, so easy, 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 easy. That was I'm quite sorry, amazing. Sorry. And then we see Hamish going up, up the inside of Thomas and, and that uh, puts him into 11th place. Now on board with Kiku. Uh, both their arms are uh, relatively high up the grid. And that's Thomas. Wow, what a move. Now, I forgot the corner, but... I, uh, but I think that was Portier. Portier, and I think uh, Hulkenberg also did a very similar move. And it uh, looks like Thomas wanted to recreate it. Yeah, and uh, we've got Zephyr all over the back of... I think that's Peck. That is Peck. Oh, and... Oh! Oh, oh Peck. Oh, Kiku's been spun. He spun Zephyr as well, and he's lost his front wing. He's going to have to pit. His first lap really is not very good for him. He's staying still just so he doesn't uh, ooh, nearly <laughs> nearly hits MP but um, on board with Hamish now pulled a small gap to Monster and that's <coughs> the end of the first lap at 125.7 and uh, Desania now as he goes round Artos who and uh, ooh, actually yeah no he's, he's closing him down maybe looking take the position Chasma's still right on the back of Silver he's not getting away with this lead and uh, going around the head and he gets wide and we have Kiku of course pitting after that unfortunate yeah. crash and uh, I think there was just a lot oh, of lag. Oh god, sorry, sorry, and sorry. Oh, oh shit. dear. That's Bark. not very good, is no, it? No, I'm I gone. Think. Oh. No. God. <laughs> sorry about that, Arcos. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> That's the thing. Not very yeah. good. We have to say, yeah, like you said, explaining what happened, basically, you spam him. <laughs> But, uh, but anyway. I didn't spin him. It oh was, no, uh, no, no but still, I think it's very me, unlucky. But no one had anywhere to go, so yeah, it's it is a racing unlucky. incident. This, oh dear! You see, a peg <laughs> in the corner quite dramatically there. That's something I think we're going to look out for. Uh, Ash again doesn't get the corner. Thomas cuts the corner. <laughs> it's very hard though to get a good run, especially especially in heavy fuel. It's very hard not to cut that corner. Um, but anyway, uh, on board now with Shakane, he's behind Hamish. Hamish is in fifth, and that's uh, quite good considering he started right at the back of the, uh, of the uh, grid. So he's made up uh, a lot of places in these opening uh, few laps. And uh, yeah, and uh, of course, he, uh, Kiku is one of the drivers who handed him one of the places. He's now in 13th, but uh, unfortunately, uh, he. Uh, he was involved in an incident which was actually no one's fault. It's no one who looked at by the stewards. Uh, they found it was no one's fault. Uh, but yeah, I suspect the stewards are going to be quite busy in this race, Artos. Yeah, yeah, it's a very tight track as Hamish there clips the barrier on the exit, maybe. I don't know if he did or not, but uh, we'll see if he gets a decent run. And oh, and uh, fuck Thomas fuck loses connection there. No, man. <laughs> as, uh, Silver's going purple, and I um, think we're riding on board with Silver now, overtaking. But Chicane, right on the back of Hamish, and oh my uh, God. Hamish hits the wall on the exit there. It's a pretty scruffy lap from him, but um, he's hit, well, he's not hitting his apexes, but he's keeping Chicane behind, at least for the moment. Chicane a second, well, two seconds up from his previous lap, which um, kind of uh, suggests that he is being held up quite a bit by Hamish as uh, he's caught yeah. him, but now he's stuck behind him. Ingold this curves up to the run to the line then. And he's all over the back of him. Hamish misses his apex a bit, but gets quite a good drive out of that corner and uh, is pulling away up the hill. Yeah, um, I, j I just want to apologise for any bad language or anything. You guys have to understand it is Monaco, uh, so any bad language during the, this race, uh, we do apologise. But back to the action, and you can actually see Hamish is on the soft tyres rather than the super soft, so he's hoping to come in about lap 12 or 13, I'm guessing. That's uh, how long uh, these uh, soft tyres last, so it'll be interesting to see if he can make his strategy work. He definitely has made it work so far, so uh, yeah, anyway, we've got DH, and uh, he's quite a while uh, away ahead, and uh, we've got Silver, Chaz, uh, 4.6 seconds behind Silver, so Silver's really going for it in just four laps, already over four seconds, so that is a very good start from Silver, and Peck is also behind Chaz, so it's good to see uh, Peck there as well, that will be, uh, so far, oh, it's his highest uh, finishing position. Uh, he's only got a few handful of points, so it'll be interesting to see if he can uh, extend uh, the amount of points he gets with, uh, hopefully, a podium finish. Yeah, indeed. Uh, of course, this is still very, very early on in the race, so we can't uh, 
take anything for granted now as to where people will finish. But uh, we've got Desania and uh, Artos in 7th and 8th after that unfortunate spin at the hairpin. Nothing anyone could do there really, just sort of got caught on the cars and then spun. And actually the two drivers got a penalty for that. Of course, spun in the middle of the road, the game uh, thought they were blocking the track and uh, gave them both 10 second penalties. That just adds to their worries. Yes. But now <laughs> we've got Chicane still all over the back of Hamish, trying to pressure him into mistaken. Looks like Desania is also caught up to this little fight we've got here. Hamish looks like he's got slightly lower wings than uh, Chicane because he seems to pull be pulling away on the straight but then uh, not so good in the corners as he hits the barrier around the outside of the Chicane there and uh, obviously Chicane gets a, a good uh, run on him and passes him nice and cleanly on the inside and now it's Desania's job to try and get past Mrs. Apex there. The ball has already been taken out which uh, isn't surprising considering yeah. the, uh, the difficulty of Monaco but he's had to adjust his turn in slightly there. He did it quite right, but he nails that apex, and he's got a lot of curves and DRS on Hamish going up the uh, start-finish straight. Yeah, I, uh, you're talking there about the bollards, and uh, yeah, I think Monaco is perhaps one of those tracks where we're a little bit more lenient on uh, penalties and stuff, uh, purely because it is just so difficult, you know, not to cut the corner. You're going flat out every single lap, so 39 laps. It is you're always going to make mistakes. So as long as I, I think we'll be seeing quite a lot of driver chain, uh, changes in position at the end of the race due to penalties. So uh, we have to look out for that and uh, see which drivers uh, fall down because of their penalties. Anyway, on board with Peck now. I'm not sure if he's closing on Chaz. Uh, I think we'll it was see. two point six or so last time we had a look. I believe so. so. Um, oh, we didn't get a gap unfortunately mm -hmm. there, but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, on board with Kiku. I wonder how far behind he is from Zephyr. He's twenty-one seconds behind. Good lord! Only person behind Kiku is MP Racing, who's also had a very bad uh, beginning of a race for him. Yeah, indeed. I thought. He, I think he. Uh Lost a couple of uh, front wings already by lap seven um, at this stage, so not very going very well for him there. But uh, the Hamish hitting the uh, the wall on the main straight there, which is a bit unusual to see. So we've got uh, Chicane not pulling away as fast as I think actually. On I think Chicane's on the super soft tyres, and Hamish is only on the uh, the soft tyres, which are the primes. And uh, we see Silver coming in for his first stop. What's it going to be? 3.0 seconds, decent stop there, not getting held up obviously because he's in the lead. Got uh, some nice clear air. Let's see if he comes out. That was very surprising. Instant clear air. I thought he'd uh, yeah. come in there a little later, but anyway, oh well. Anyway. Oh well. Uh, and we'll see uh, what the do. Maybe he's going for a slightly different strategy. Of course, he put on the soft tyres and he hasn't come out in clean air, unfortunately. He has come out in third though, which is. Oh no, he hasn't. He's fifth. It did say third on the side, but um, behind Chicane, who's being uh, held up by DH, it looks like trying to get a nice wide uh, line into this corner. Just want to cut in quickly. Oh, yeah. Um yep. I think this is where Silver's gap really comes into effect because actually he knows he's not. He's unlikely to lose four seconds behind Chicane in this lap. Um, he was about 5.2 uh, seconds ahead of Chaz when he came into the pit so he's unlikely to lose that time uh, in this lap behind Chicane and uh, Chicane is also on the same tyre strategy as him so uh, we should see Chicane and Dysania coming in at the end of this lap or next anyway uh, he's just a four tenths of a second is the gap so uh, you can see how much faster Silver is uh, in these relatively early <coughs> stages and no one pits that's a big surprise actually yeah. Uh, anyway, we see Hamish locking up, not going into the wall, and uh, Dysania is right on his tail as we see Dysania going into the pits on, at the end of lap 9. Yep, back to uh, Silver Arrow, of course you said. He has got quite a big lead on uh, Chasma in second. Obviously this is uh, not the actual race order, but when it comes out of the pits, it's going to be uh, back to how it was. But uh, this definitely isn't going to be uh, all plain sailing for him because he is being held up quite a lot. And uh, he's not going to be enjoying these few laps while he's stuck behind them because every lap he does, Chasma is driving as hard as he can. But then saying that, it looks like he has pitted as Tarkin gets out of the way there of Peck, who is leading the race. Yes. Um, of course, yet to pit. So. Yeah. 
You can see he's actually got a flat spot on his tyres as Beck, so he's obviously locked up a couple of times to cause that. Um, so hopefully that's not going to affect him too much under braking, and you really can see, even on the soft tyres, how much uh, Silver Arrow is closing in on Chicane, uh, and how easy it is. And this is Chicane, surely he's not going to take him to the casino section? No, he isn't. It's not casino, it's uh, Raskas. Raskas. <laughs> I think uh, you are meaning to say that. <laughs> I mean, as, as you can tell, now. I've, I've spent hours learning the track corners as I just completely <laughs> mess up Casino Square with Raskas. Anyway, it <laughs> uh, looks like uh, most drivers have pitted now. Uh, a DH Ooh. is left, and Chaz is only a second behind, so look how much he managed to close in. So uh, well done to Chaz for doing that. And is Silver <coughs> going to get a run? Uh, no, he isn't. Well, yeah, that's like I said, he is not going to be uh, happy with what's happened. He, he's going to ideally want to have come out of the pits in clear air so he can drive as fast as he can possibly can. So he's right on the back of DH. He might be able to get a move. He's got a lot of curves and he's using it all, but unfortunately we cut away back to Peck. He's in seventh and in traffic as well. So a lot of drivers finding trouble with... Oh, and ah, that's nearly a Perez and Raikkonen moment from 2013 as... Uh, DH nearly turns in on him into uh, that corner, but uh, fortunately they managed to uh, not make contact. They're good drivers, and Chasma right behind Silver Arrow now, so he's going to have DRS, and this is going to be an excellent opportunity for Chasma maybe to take the lead after DH pits. Yeah, so we see Peck in 7th. It looks like he might have lost a couple of positions unless the uh, drives ahead of him are on different tyre strategies and then yet haven't pitted. No, we see Hamish in 4th, so uh, has he pitted yet? Oh, no, if he hasn't, he is now, and you can see uh, he's looking at, so if you want to have a look at the uh, current standings, as we've got Silver having a gone. DH into Malibu and he has got the move done around the inside. That's a brilliant corner. And this is a uh, from the same thing from Chaz's point of view. And uh yep. yeah. and it looks like DH is gonna lose two places. Oh no, he breaks late for the hairpin. But uh that's actually uh pronounced Mirabeau, not Malibu, as I think you said before. Uh, um of course we'll forgive you because uh obviously it's not a law to learn the uh, corner names of Monaco, although it should be. Was to say, you know, punts in a 113.5. I think that was the fastest lap. Only a tenth slower, faster even than uh, Chaz as uh, he makes slight contact with the edge, and I think lag bubbles them both over the chicane. Only get a warning for it, but you don't want to be doing that too much because uh, again. No can gain you a lot of time cutting that chicane. I'll upload it. As uh, Silver now in the lead, like and that's where he wants to be. Uh, he's pulling away from DH's. It looks like Chaz has got past it, or maybe DH has pitted. We'll see now. No, he did actually legitimately make that move. That's a very good move. Slight contact on the exit there, but um, that's an excellent move from Chaz. So now he can set about only closing down Silver, who's, I think, about a second clear at that point. And now uh, Peck went up the hill, chasing Zephyr. Hamish now looking, maybe, maybe having a bit of trouble down there in ninth, as uh, he's only got Kiku behind him. Uh, maybe he uh, hasn't got the pace here, but uh, we see Chicane now coming onto the back of Peck, and uh, I think that Zephyr may well not be. Yes, it is indeed Zephyr. So uh, there's a nice little train going on, and I think that's Hamish up in front holding them all up. So, uh, or it may actually it may well be Artos. Um, I don't know. It's, we'll see in a moment because uh, we've got uh, a nice little battle, and they'll close up here, and we might be able to see the sh the uh, thing as. Whoever that driver is goes straight on over the chicane. Has uh, maybe, probably, well, most definitely got a penalty for that. I think if it was Artos, he did get a penalty. Um, but now Pe Peck makes massive contact with the wall on the exit. Chicane gets a run on him, as he did beforehand. And uh, both Safa and Artos go into the pits. So uh, Chicane gained two positions there. Or three, technically, because he overtook Peck. So that's a very productive lap for him. He's in fourth now. As, uh, I think we've lost Hamish there, but uh, carry on commentating regardless. Oh, As, I'm uh, so sorry. I had my mic muted. <laughs> you had your mic muted. Oh, that's dear. That's very smooth. Fantastic. <laughs> Comedy gameplay coming. 
Anyway, I think uh, what Artos yeah, did there... Yeah, live commentary, there, everyone, yeah. behind you. <laughs> I think what uh, Artos did there, cutting the Nobel chicane, I think yeah, is better than up. putting the car into the wall. And then, of course, that would yep. cause a safety car, especially uh, around that section. And we see Hamish going purple. He's made a couple of positions from ninth, and it looks like he's also jumped Artos. Now, I believe Artos is in a different pit strategy, and he's under a lot of pressure from Zephyr. So this is going to be interesting. See what happens now. Um, so yeah, this is going to be interesting. How do the sound dri drivers play this? Uh, teammates, one's definitely going to be yeah, faster. Always. We'll have to have a look at the next time uh, we see a gap. Um, yeah. So yeah, Shikane's going purple at the moment. Uh, I wonder if he's going to get faster slap. Well, we'll see, won't we? Um, I can tell you the uh, pit strategy for that of Artus was he started on the prime, so he can go quite deep into this race. Obviously, unfortunately, having that spin meant that he was a bit further down the order. But now, he, uh, his middle stint was on option, so he's going to be much faster, or should be much faster than Hamish, and of course, Dysenia ahead of him. So, um, if these Sauber drivers uh, are going to be sensible with this, uh, Hamish is going to let Artus through. And um, because he's on the faster tyre and he doesn't want to hold him up, but uh, Tarkin always also being lapped. So uh, oh, getting out of the way, not too smoothly there, but uh, yeah. now uh, Hamish clear of him now. And uh, Chicane in fourth, which is a very good in fourth is a very good result after I think uh, Hamish, uh, Chicane even had issues uh, on the first few laps. Obviously Artos now right behind Hamish, uh, Hamish in only about a lap from two seconds behind, so he's much, much faster. Well, I'm on the Ooh, team radio, options, so do you want to let me pass? Thank you. Team radio has uh, well, no options. Well, you me. So team orders, in a way, <laughs> coming into effect. Now, is Hamish going to let him pass? Is he going to let his teammate pass in Monaco? We see Silver setting the fastest lap, but Hamish and Artos won't be worrying about that now. So, where's the best place to let a teammate pass? Um, I would maybe say start just straight, oh no, into uh, Raskas. Slightly, <laughs> slightly unorthodox, but um, we'll let it go. As, uh, oh. oh dear, that uh, move hasn't been very good for Hamish as he uh, has messed up. And there's a lot of debris on the track as well from where Kiku's going across. So I think there may have been an incident there as well. It says, as, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Only person behind Kiku at the moment, uh, significantly, is MP Racing when we have Tarkin, who I don't think likes this track, and his pace is showing that, so uh, it's unfortunate. If if you don't have the pace and consistency around Monaco, you're going to find it really tough, especially for that hour of racing these guys have to have to endure. As we see Silver, he's only opened the gap by about a second and uh, 1.7 seconds to Chaz since the pit stop, so their pace is almost identical. Um, anyway, we see uh, DH is behind Hamish now, not Zephyr, so I wonder what happens to Zephyr, so that'll be interesting. Yep, as uh, mm -hmm. we've got mm -hmm. some people uh, in a, uh, a pretty big train behind yeah. Peck here. Yeah. <laughs> um, as we saw Arthos just then had uh, made up a, uh, extended a very large gap to um, Hamish already, so uh, much, much faster on these softs. He's going, he's pr he's on a mission at the moment because he's had that spin. He just wants to get down and uh, race. He's got a lot of clear track, as you can see, ahead of him. He's the car up ahead. He's got pretty much the entire first sector clear track as he sets the fastest lap, a 113.0. So uh, really flying right now. Yeah, so it looks like Hamish did the right thing to let him pass the mats. Well, I was going to say that's allowed him to extend the gap on Zephyr, but we're not quite sure where Zephyr is. He's sort of, uh, I think he's lost it. <laughs> so I think Zephyr, uh, that might have been Zephyr's debris. We saw, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was by back, but I might be wrong. But I think um, that's where, uh, that's what the debris was. was. Yep, as uh Dania now all over the back of Peck. Peck makes a, a quite a large mistake cutting the chicane, hitting the bollard, which is going to compromise him all through this section. But uh, hitting his apex nicely there, making sure there's no room on the inside. As I say that, he's left a lot of room on the inside for Tazania maybe to have a, a nose down into. But he's staying to the middle of the track and maybe further to the left, so uh, forcing Tazania to maybe make a decision even if he was close enough, which he's not. So Peck holds on for maybe a sector at least, more, maybe a lap. But uh, Desania is uh, all over the back of him, and there's only a matter of time really before 
one of the drivers makes a mistake as Artus sets another fastest lap, consecutive laps, 112.9. So really, really flying right now. Yeah, we just saw Zephyr peeling off into the pits and uh, still got Peck in fourth, so this is still going to be his uh, uh, personal best uh, finish so far in the AOR, but uh, if Dossanian can do anything about it, he's going to be getting fourth. So we've got racing all around the track. It's, uh, it's going to be an entertaining race in the, uh, it's the inside corner of the Nobel. So uh, very unfortunate uh, for Dysenio. He lost almost a second, I'd say, uh, just uh, by doing that. Anyway, on board now with Silva, and uh, the gap's now 3.5. So in three laps, he's uh, extended the gap by another eight tenths of a second. And uh, this is Tarkin, I think, getting lapped again. We'll find out in a minute. No, it's not. It's Zephyr. Uh, so uh, we've got a uh, Red Bull's teammate, uh, or sister teammate. It's the team, isn't it? <laughs> it's Toro Rosso. Yeah. Toro Rosso, of course. Um, <laughs> Let's and, uh, pass nice over. and yeah, I have uh, good judgment there by Zephyr. So uh, anyway, on board now with Dysano. Is he going to try and move uh, and peck into the hairpin? Is there a possible Maybe. place over it's possible he's here? But uh, he's not it's very, very difficult, isn't it? Um, obviously, uh, you need to be pretty much in the car ahead's gearbox if you even want to think about making a move, unless they make a mistake, of course. If you want to pass them legitimately, you have to be, I think, on most tracks, it's about a second faster than the car ahead to make a clean pass. On this track, it's three seconds. So, oh, there's a, a car ghost there. I don't know what that was. I think it might just have been lag, but uh, saw a car's uh, wheel. As Peck makes a massive mistake into turn one, the mistake I was talking about um, it's going to happen at some point and he lets Desenia through and Arthur's in 6th from about 8th uh, place I think he was in though he's recovered a couple of places in uh, 19 laps or 18 laps and uh, which uh, he's not going to be wanting to do but there's a lot of drivers in a short uh, base of track here so if he's still quicker if he catches him he looks like he's going to do that because the gap's only 2.6 seconds to pack now then uh, he can hopefully clear them again and get himself into fourth position. As uh, we see Hamish going purple there in the first sector, so it'll be interesting to see if he can get the fastest lap on these <laughs> relatively old tyres. They must be they must be getting on one, nine laps old now. Um, so anyway, he's going to want to try and catch up uh, catch up with Artos, cutting the uh, chicane ever so slightly. And he's basically got not no cars ahead of him at all behind him within sort of five seconds. Yep, very uh, clear track, so which is good to race in, no pressure. But then you have to make sure that you don't start cruising, um, because uh, that in that time, then when the pit stops come around, you could easily be jumped by someone. But Peck, looking like Desenia, wasn't that much quicker. He's only pulled out a second with Peck's mistake, and uh, I think Peck I lost an M plate as well there. So Desenia not as much quicker as, as Peck as we thought he might be but then saying that it looks like he's pulled out a gap in this first sector and yeah he's pulled out four tenths so he is quite a lot faster but not quite as fast as we thought he now might who be. Who is that? Is that Chicane? I think it is. That may well have been. And it was Chicane as we see uh, Hamish passing Chicane only just though. Uh, wow. So only yep. just into Casino. So yeah. Well done uh, there. And as we see Peck coming out of the pits as well. Uh, that's uh, gifted Kiku 8th. Now I wonder if uh, Kiku can recover from the earlier mistake he made. It wasn't a mistake, was it? It was just an well, unfortunate, it is un unfortunate lag yeah. slash uh, uh, lag. Say mosh pit, but it wasn't really. It was just a, a massive incident that happened. Um, really unfortunate. No one's fault, really. Just um, one thing led to another. But uh, Hamish looking like he's wow. breaking very late, and he did indeed break very late. Cutting the corner. What is going on here? They're going about two miles an hour through this game. Wow. But uh, three wide. And looks like Hamish has lost two positions there, which is I know, not it's one position, but uh, still not going well. Not a very good middle sector from him at all there. And oh. he loses. Dasinia loses it, and Hamish gets that position right back. So uh, quite a quite a hectic uh, middle and last sector has been going on, and uh, Dasinia comes into the bit. It's obviously. Think had enough of those tyres there. Yeah, Artos, I was going to say, I think, I, uh, if I recall from the race, uh, Dysania was saying that his tyres were absolutely dead. So, uh, yeah, well, we can't actually see his tyre now. Uh, but, uh, 
But yes, I'm quite sure they were quite, quite red, probably redder than Kiku's Ferrari. He's uh, currently <laughs> in seventh. Wow, see what I did there. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that was very clever, but <laughs> Kiku's tyres not really looking that good themselves. Um, as we have Chicane in fourth now, and Arta's up to third. Of course, that is, uh, he's only made one pit stop, but still, that's a remarkable recovery from being stopped stuck for about 20 seconds at the, uh, the hairpin after that crash. So um, he's he's really made some progress and Hamish in fifth as uh, yeah, we have Chicane pulling away quite quickly. I uh, think he may may well be the fastest faster driver today. But we've got Peck now in eighth place as uh, running in third at one point. That's uh, really not very good for him. But we've got Silver now in first and Chasma only five tenths behind him. Wow. So Either Silver's made a mistake, or Chaz has just uh, really I think Chaz put the hammer down. Got the pace on Silver. Yeah, I think he may well do, but uh, we've got Silver. I think either that or his tyres have gone off. Um, I can't see any other explanation for it because Silver very rarely makes any mistakes, uh, even around Monaco, which is the hardest track to drive, apart from Look maybe Singapore. That. But uh, yeah, as we as he avoids some debris there, very smart driving from him there. He doesn't want to lose any momentum or even get a puncture going over those tires, uh, those that debris there. <laughs> yeah, I can say if you're going over tires, you're going to get a lot more than a puncture. But yeah, you can just see uh, you're talking about consistency and and Chicane does it very well as, as well. Uh, but we saw Silver how well he directed himself through Nobel. Uh, I thought that was pretty amazing driving on lap 26. So. Uh, over halfway, uh, on board with Hamish, who's in fifth, uh, he's uh, behind Chicane by five seconds, and uh, DH is behind Hamish by 4.1. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what drivers close in and uh, and pull away from drivers. So can he? Oh, and it looks like someone's came into the pit. Uh, I'm not sure who that was. Uh, maybe DH. Looks like it might have been DH there. Is he? is uh, 3.4 seconds behind him. I don't think he would have gained a second. But um, I think Hamish's tyres, he was due to stop that lap. They weren't looking good at all. Uh, he was about to drop off the pace if they didn't already. But so Desania is uh, setting fairly consistent lap times, actually. His, his last lap it was only a 13-0 by the looks Hot of Hot how long uh, do the options last? But, uh, we've 13. got Peck over the back of Kiku now, who's uh, recovered fairly well Cheers. from uh, his incident to be ahead of the person who overtook him and uh, raced in third for much of the first stint but uh, oh look at Kiku's tyres they're not good at all they're just want to, to go cut off. in quickly um, Artos you could uh, mm -hmm. hear Hamish asking uh, over for AJ um, how long tyres last and uh, Zephyr replied 13 laps so do you think he or how this is how long option tyres last so do you think Hamish is going to go for options or primes for this last stint what would you do well, I don't know. It depends uh, how, how long you can stretch it out. He did not, indeed. He's trying to stretch them out again. So we've got about uh, 12 laps to the finish now. And uh, you could very, uh, well, not easily, but you could theoretically take a set of options to the end now, which uh, I think a lot of drivers were thinking of doing at this stage. Um, some drivers opting for primes, opting for the safe way in case the uh, options can't quite make it or they... Uh, lock up and uh, cause a lot of tyre degradation but look at that Chasma and it's almost 20 seconds to the next car so him and Silver are just uh, in a league of their own in the lead of this race but uh, we've got Hamish holding up DH quite a lot right now and uh, having a lot of uh, oversteer moments and uh, the tyres aren't very quick at all looks like DH is probably going to have him uh, at the end of the slap if not now I'm coming up behind you but no he's, he's falling back looks like he doesn't want to have a go Hamish yeah. really struggling over here. He cuts the chicane. Uh, not really meant to do that, but you see, that, Artos, Artos and me, DH almost DH. making contact. I'm not sure well, if they I did make contact. That <laughs> may well have been loud, but uh, Hamish letting both of them through. Appreciate I don't know it. if he meant to let DH through as well, but he did let both of them through as uh, he recognises Artos is driving very well at the moment, um, and of course he's on dead option uh, primes even <laughs> that uh, gonna. He's, he does indeed pit. Uh, didn't really have to let them both through, but of course. I wonder if Kiki's going to get. The, sorry, Artos. I wonder if Kiki's going to get the undercut here because he did pit in last lap. So I wonder if Kiki's oh. going to get an undercut because this seems to be a very slow lap from Hamish, yeah, and, and Kiki is stop. behind Hamish. Um, be interesting to see where he comes out. I have to keep an eye on that. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, well, it was a very slow stop. I think he was having his front wing changed as well after a previous accident that he had. But um, Silva has been passed by Chasma um, at some point. I don't know if we did see that before, but uh, he's now in second and 4.8 seconds to Chas. So Chas has really found another gear in the second half of this race. As it looks like Kiku on the right there has lost hers, so uh, his overtaking ability on Hamish is going to be severely hampered because uh, he didn't get the undercut, as we were saying before, and Hamish now on options on the same tyre as Kiku, so not really if they're equal drivers going to be any pace difference. So it's going to come down to can Kiku drive fast enough and well enough and consistent enough to get past Hamish? Well, we'll see, but uh, the next car up the road is Tessania, three or four seconds up the road there probably not going to get caught by these guys although there is quite a lot of debris in the middle of the track Hamish having a little uh, play around with his brake bias there trying to find the uh, the, the right balance and uh, maybe gain some pace you never know yeah I just want to ask you a question Artos oh dear Ooh. we see Daisenia he's able to flick into reverse and he's able good to save. spin around at the first corner well, good save not to lose That's any end plates there nice that was very save good. indeed anyway <laughs> back to Back to what I was going to say, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. What do you think the podium is going to be? So, first and second, who do you think is going to take it? Well, I don't know. It's, well, obviously, uh, you'd think Chasma and uh, Silver Arrow are going to fight yeah. it out for the top two spots, but really, third place, it's its really anyone's guess. Uh, chicane Came right now, but we have Arthas in fourth. Mm. Fourth from that uh, large crash that he had on lap uh, two or three I think it was but um, Hamish down in eighth not uh, optimal I don't think we're going to be seeing uh, any of these drive well we might do we may see uh, well I don't know I don't think we'll be seeing any of these drivers uh, go into the top half of the uh, finishing positions we see Tarkin being lapped again he's uh, he's quite good at letting drivers pass what's he going to do very uh, good decision there just uh, uh, Stopping there as we uh, also see Kiku, of course, passing him, and uh, we also we see uh, Kiku might have an issue with his engine. I'm not sh sure if that's because his curves have gone or if he's got another issue as well, because we saw that was uh, glowing red. So hopefully he's not lost power or anything, as we see Hamish almost uh, putting the car into the wall on the first corner. Yeah, as uh, Kiku now leading the train uh, between Hamish and. Uh Oh, actually, did, did, did Hamish get passed then by Kiku? I think he must have done because uh, Kiku was definitely not ahead of Hamish uh, last lap. But we've got DH behind Hamish as well, not that far behind as well. The order's been in, of these series been completely shuffled around in one lap, but Hamish going purple right now, so he definitely does not um, have. Uh, well, he doesn't not have the pace, if you uh, understand what I mean. Yes, I, I think we did just about our toss. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were MP. So, uh, yeah. ooh, he sets a new personal best, but it's still not uh, a purple last sector. Because it goes to that, Kiku. That did indeed go to Kiku. Well, 111.8 is a very good lap from him. Now, these nice. two drivers are absolutely flying. They're five seconds behind Dysania. Are they going to be able to catch him up? We'll have to have a look at Dysania's lap, who we can't quite see at the moment, so uh, be interesting. However, Kiku's taken out three temps in one sector alone. That's an awesome driving, and I think Hamish has got similar pace to Kiku as well. Uh, anyway, yep. still on board with Pep. He's in fifth, and uh, he's quite a way ahead of Dysania. So I think if Kiku and Hamish are going to pass someone, it's going to be Dysania. I don't think, unless Pep makes a mistake or comes into pits, uh, I, I don't wouldn't think have thought he's going to do. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought so either. Uh, I don't think they're going to be passing Peck anytime soon. Uh, anyway, on board with Kiku, what's the gap now? Whoa, 3.7. So he's taken out almost a second <laughs> in, a, in a lap. So uh, very good driving uh, there from Kiku. Yeah, Hamish cutting that chicane again. That's going to happen a lot of times this race. So uh, um, not really anything to complain about, although you're not meant to do it. But uh, it is so hard to uh, not cut any corners in Monaco. Uh, partly because the game just oh, lets you and partly because fourth... Um, it's just so easy to make a mistake, but it looks like Silver's tyres are almost gone, and it's still five laps to the end of the race, and he's lost an end plate, so his, his uh, pace is going to be severely compromised. And he is last miles few laps. behind Chaz. Miles behind. Uh, I didn't see the gap. Let's see. It. Oh, we didn't quite get to see it as he crossed the start-finishing line, but uh, 
Kiku in seventh, um, recovered slightly. Hamish still in eighth, and Tania in sixth. So uh, we've got five laps to go. It uh, could all all still change. Very yeah. easy to make a mistake. Very easy to lose a front wing. Lose about 30 seconds, maybe more, in a pit stop. But um, and of course with the incident as well, depends where you lose any front wings. But uh, the drivers just now starting to get into the mode of just bring it home, unless of course they're very close to a driver. As Hamish is on Kiku, but um, is he going to pass him into Nobel? I wouldn't have thought so. Don't think he is. No, I mean Kiku's made this slight contact with the wall, but that's not going to affect his speed coming to to back. As Hamish misses his a -pot. very bad. <laughs> Miles behind, uh, and uh, Kiku no is all wow. <laughs> Kiku <laughs> is right on the right on the tail of Dysania. Uh So let's see if he's going to be passing him. But DRS, what are your views on DRS? Kiku forgot to use it for the first half. However, does it really make any difference? Well, round Monaco, I wouldn't. I think it makes about two meters difference from the last corner to the first corner. Uh, if you get DRS from behind the car, including slipstream. About two meters. Hamish so, has oh, he may. Yes, he has indeed done. But uh, Kurz, of course, having a much bigger impact on lap times around Monaco, where uh, traction and uh, well, not so much straight line speed, but traction is very important here because you've got a lot of slow corners. As Hamish gives uh, Kiku a little bit of a lag tap, um, if he passed him there, he would have had to let Kiku back through. But uh, he uh, doesn't quite manage to get the move done. If indeed he would have done anyway. So, uh, just want to put the sporting uh, driver, but put um, out something as well. These drivers are catching up with Peck. Are we going to have a five, a four-car battle for fifth place? Do you think, Carlos? Can be end of the race because <laughs> if we are, I think that's going to end quite an amazing Monaco Grand Prix. As we see, yeah. Kiku's going to have a go. Oh, and what, what a move! A move. That is a fantastic move. Hamish is taking him off as well. Wow. Yep. Uh, Kiku, oh, and he goes wide as well there, but so there's and so the yeah. letting DH through. That may well. Tarkin <laughs> <laughs> may be getting fed up there. I think uh, he's saying he was letting DH through there. But, um, We're only a second oh, away from the car ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, well, that was that was quite It heavy. wasn't let's the left by the way. Let's try and, uh, <laughs> so we hear Chasma on the radio explaining that um, Tarkin did indeed just get fed up and bury it in a wall somewhere. But, um, yeah, that was quite hectic, wasn't it? Um, but uh, I think Kiku came out the best in there. Indeed, catching up to Peck. 2.6 seconds. We'll see what it is next lap. Kiku's closing in very fast. So we can Peck's see uh, he's only uh, two oh, okay. and a bit Zero. seconds behind Peck. And, I do and they're both on the option tyres. Their tyres are fresher. So, well, catching up's one thing, passing is another thing around here. As, it is indeed. As uh, we see Hamish taking a very bad line. Uh, into Nobel. Um, no, less, so. less than optimal, isn't it? And uh, yeah. into back as well. About two meters off his apex. Everyone at some point hitting the outside wall around the back. But uh, this swimming pool section is a lovely little section to drive in an F1 car. You can just so get through Peck the barriers. But Peck makes. He's gonna he does make a mistake, him. and it looks like he blocked him there, but perfectly legal because there isn't really room for two cars around there. You see some drivers managing to pull it off, but. Uh, Peck doing a slightly oh, dirty job like defending Kiki's and he has contact with Peck and put him in the wall. Yes, yeah, he's been buried in the wall. That's uh, Peck's race all but over. Just one lap from the end. Uh, Kiki taking a very wide line through uh, one of you did. Square there. But uh, wow. we're heading now down towards Portier and uh, race control here. Oh. We've got Kiku is under investigation for forcing another driver off the track or causing a collision. Was that, that on Peck? Oh, that's on Peck. Oh, that's on Peck. I think that was also a passing move made on Desenia in the uh, swimming pool, maybe for the moment she came, made a move to place. Uh, see replay, locked up, no, mm. it was like a Definitely. 100% like on the really unfortunate game, but uh, you can't really help it, can you? I'd be very surprised if the stewards give any type of penalties, and if they do, I don't think it'll be the right decision, so I'd have to check that, uh, see if they do. Um, I very much doubt he will get a penalty. But uh, we've got 25.5 seconds to fourth place, Artos. Wow. That's incredible. Actually, and Artos has actually got a 20 second penalty as we see Hamish overtaking Kiki for Ooh. fifth place. Yeah, um, he has uh, at this point got a 20 second penalty. So um, at this at this moment, uh, maybe thinking about asking Hamish to maybe train the others a little so they don't catch up to him quite before the end of the race more than uh, 20 seconds behind. 
so uh, he doesn't lose any places from fourth position. But uh, a very good recovery from both drivers, Artos and oh, as Peck goes into the pits, of course, after that incident. But um, a good That's recovery from Kiku and Artos at Kiku. the moment. Well, sixth. He was fifth, wasn't he? As Chasma takes out the win. Excellent win there as uh, a very yeah, strategic Kiku's race. Run out of fuel. But, um... See, Chaz uh, taking the win. His fastest lap on 1 minute 12 1. That's uh, not a million miles off pole last year. And then we have Hamish with the fastest lap, and he's got an 11.8. And that's only four tenths off pole last year. And this yep. isn't the race. That's so in the race, of course, with about 10 laps of fuel when he set the time. So a yeah. good lap from him. But we got Kiku probably almost certainly going to take home sixth place if he doesn't lose it in the last two corners, which I very much doubt. But, um,. I just believe. Take it yeah. cautious now. 23 seconds, Artos is going to hold fourth position. So, um, ha Hamish in fifth after running in uh, the very low points uh, positions for much of the race. Yeah, if I hadn't been. How, uh, that, was, that was some race, wasn't it? That was, was quite a race, yeah. I think uh, we've been treated there to Monaco. We've had lots of battles all, way, all the way around. Anyway, let's have a look now at the uh, driver standings after that race. We have Chaz taking the win from Silver Arrow a whole 16 seconds. I was not expecting that gap after, uh, after yeah, I wasn't well, expecting initial that Initial race gap. pace, wasn't it? It was very, very, very good from Silver Arrow pulling away from Chaz. But uh, it just looked like in the second half, just, uh, Chaz just had that little bit extra. Of course, Silver driving with quite bad tyres and damage for uh, the last stint of the race. But um, we've got Chicane in third, and um, I know for a fact that he was very much under pressure from Artos at the end of the race. If you subtract 20 seconds from Artos' uh, race time, you see that he only finished three tenths behind Chicane at the line. So um, that was very good to almost get a provisional podium for Artos, but of course, 20 second penalty for. Uh, one of them was for cutting the chicane in front of Zephyr you saw slightly earlier in, in the race and also the uh, incident at the hairpin blocking the track. But you can also course, see how close nowhere Hamish to go. is. Hamish, oh, of course, yeah. Just two seconds behind. Two seconds. If he caught him much more, then uh, it would have been Hamish in fourth. But um, an excellent uh, sour result there with uh, DH uh, coming sixth after running in quite high positions. Kiku, very good drive there for Ferrari to come back after that awful incident. Yeah. Um, Desania, reserve driver, not doing so well, although looks strong early in the race, but of course uh, tailed off slightly towards the end. And of course we get down to the lapped cars, we have Peck, which is very unfortunate for him, running in third for the entire first stint. Really uh, unfortunate for him that uh, he finished that far down because um, he really showed promise early in the race. And we have Zephyr and uh, MP Racing rounding out the, uh, the finishers with um, Thomas, uh, well it's F1 LS Monster, but that is Thomas and Tarkin, they're both disconnecting, um, of course Tarkin uh, both destroyed, Red Bull destroyed his vehicle, but uh, yeah both Red Bull drivers, interesting result, well, MP racing two laps down by the end, not very good result for him. <laughs> well we're going to have a look at the drivers championship, quite a lot of changes apart from the first two, we've got Chaz ahead of uh, uh, DH almost uh, by uh, 21 points, I think. Um, About that, yeah, 21 so, points. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if DH can close in the gap. Of course, you get seven extra points for a win, so 21 points isn't all that much in the scheme of things, especially as we've still got quite a few rounds left. Mm -hmm. I think we've got yep. about 13 rounds left. Uh, if Yeah. yeah. All it takes is uh, for one of the drivers to win a race and uh, the other to DNF, and it's... Uh, points uh, differences uh, right yeah. back close championship together. Championship back on as we championship see Silver Arrow taking third from Zomac. As Zomac has shown some very poor performance for the last couple of races. He was unfortunately wasn't be able to participate in Monaco. Uh, in fifth we see Zephyr. He's heading Chicane by just three points. And then we've got F1 LS Monster. That is of course Thomas. He's on 38 points. And Mateus he is on 38 points as well. And then a little bit further down, we've got Kiku, Sorberto, Hamish, Artos, and MP Racing. Uh, so it's all looking very close uh, in the championship so far. I'd say, I'd stay, say the top, not to say five, but top four drivers still have a good chance of winning this championship. Uh, as we see Peck, Tarkin, and Krista in the, not relegation zone, but they are in the bottom three. 
because Artos is going to take us through for Constructors Championship. Yep, so after that race, Caterham not having a very strong result at all, uh, but we have them still in the lead, uh, 34 points ahead of Williams Renault, um, who are on 101 points. Uh, very good result for Chasma. Anyway, I think Peck uh, maybe wanted to uh, finish a little bit higher, but anyway, we've got Ferrari, who was, of course, Silverado and Kiku. Uh, it seems that uh, in every team, uh, one driver did very well and uh, one driver didn't do so well. But uh, then we've got uh, Toro Rosso, not having the strongest of races. Uh, Mercedes, again. Red Bull, both drivers, DNF, not very good there for them. Um, then we've got McLaren and Sauber having a, a good race by their standards. Both drivers, uh, fourth and fifth, uh, a good result. Um, Let's see if that uh, maybe sort of could have been continues higher. Continues in Silverstone. Yeah, maybe. Um, I know uh, Hamish is very good in Silverstone, um, but uh, we'll we'll have to see uh, when that comes. We've got a week break yep. uh, for the uh, the clash with the real life Canadian Grand Prix and we're also not racing the Canadian track uh, in AOR we're skipping yes. it because of corner cutting issues mostly in the last and Monza, of course guys and but we remind you that um, thanks guys for watching uh, the Monaco Grand Prix I think you agree it was a very close race it has been good fun commentating thank you very much as Marcos. indeed thank you very and, much and uh, we'll see you for in a week's time the Silverstone goodbye bye